I've been using a DVX200 for several months now, and I've discovered a few shortcuts, a few best practices that I'd like to share. So the first one that people run into is, why does the LCD screen keep turning off? You know, you're, you're setting up shot using the camera and <laughs> screen goes blank. It's an easy one to fix. And what's going on is that the viewfinder has a sensor, an eye sensor that lets it know when your eye is blocking the viewfinder. And when your eye is blocking the viewfinder, then it turns off the LCD screen in order to enable the viewfinder. It has to keep the viewfinder panel turned off because it would be extremely sensitive to stray light, uh, maybe direct sunlight could be damaging to it. So it keeps the viewfinder off as much as it can unless something's blocking it. Well, that something might be something as simple as you're using the camera and, oh, your shoulder's here. You're looking at the LCD screen. You, you, you think you're going to be using the LCD, but because your shoulder got too close, then the LCD screen goes off. How do you solve that? Two ways. Easiest way, just do that. <laughs> I do this 98% of the time I'm using this camera. Turn this up and then it's very unlikely that you're going to accidentally block this screen. So that solves it for almost every case. The other way to do it is to go in the output setup and actually disable the viewfinder. So you can go into the output setup menu and choose the LCD EVF output and set it on LCD only. And if you do that, then the viewfinder will never be used. That way, no matter whether it's down or up or whatever, you will always have your LCD. And that seems like a great way to go. The only caution I would give you is that the LCD screen is quite reflective. And so if you're using it outdoors in broad daylight, it can be hard to see. And that's where the viewfinder is wonderful. The viewfinder is a beautiful, sharp, clear image. And when you're outdoors in bright sunlight, you know, you put your eye up here, it blocks all light and you can see it perfectly. So if you've disabled it, then you're gonna have to remember to come back in the menus when you go outdoors and re-enable that. Another one that you may run into is a case of, you know, where you're adjusting the exposure, you're adjusting the iris or, or you're moving the gain or whatever, and the image isn't changing brightness. It's like it's in automatic exposure, except it's not, you know, you, you have the iris in manual. Well, it could still be in auto exposure if the automatic shutter is engaged. And how do you know the automatic shutter is engaged or not engaged? When you look on the LCD screen, if you see the shutter speed, then that means that the manual shutter is in place and you have set your manual shutter to that speed. If you don't see a shutter speed displayed, that means it's in automatic shutter and you have no idea what the shutter may be. You know, it could be a slow shutter, it could be a fast shutter, we have no idea. So my advice, always have that shutter speed displayed. And if you don't see the shutter, then come over here to the shutter button, press that button, and that will bring up the shutter speed. So that's a way that you can avoid being in automatic shutter. Another one that can, especially brand new users, if you're not familiar with all the buttons here and you're, you know, you're, you've got your eyeball behind the viewfinder and you're, you're reaching for something, it's very possible you may press one of these user buttons instead of, you know, the neutral density filter or whatever it was that you were reaching for. Well, one of those user buttons is automatic white balance. So if you press that button, not necessarily intending to, but you know, you're, you're just reaching for a button there and, and you hit the wrong one. If you had automatic white balance, then yeah, you could end up in automatic white balance when you didn't intend to. So my advice, until you know the camera intimately and you know what the buttons feel like, take ATW off of that user button. Go into the user SW menu and see which buttons, functions are assigned to which buttons. And if there's any of those that you don't want to have happen accidentally, change those functions. You can inhibit the user button entirely. It will mean that when you press that button, absolutely nothing happens, or you can put a more useful function on there, whatever. But if you find yourself ending up in automatic white balance when you didn't mean to, that's probably what happened. And I would recommend not having a function like that on one of the user buttons until you're more familiar with the camera. Here's another tip. Camera has two memory card slots and you can use either SDHC or SDXC cards in those slots. You may have a lot of SDHC cards around. They will work, but I recommend using SDXC all the time. There's nothing wrong with the SDHC. It's just that SDXC, it's gonna make your life easier when it comes to the editing room. Here's why. SDHC cards have a inherent file size limit on them. They can only make a file as large as four gigabytes. SDXC cards, as implemented in this camera, can record as much as 48 gigabytes per file. So let's say you do a long recording in 200 megabit mode where you're getting one minute 
basically for every two gigabytes. Well, that means every two minutes on an SDHC card, the camera's gonna close out that file and make a new file. Every two minutes, you're gonna have a new piece of a file. On SDXC, it'll go a full 24 minutes before it has to close the file and create a new one. So when you get to the editing suite, Let's see if you've made one 24 minute recording, you might have 12 files on your SDHC card that you have to piece piece by piece onto your timeline from the memory card, drag each one up and line them all up. Whereas if you'd used SDXC, you'll have one file, drag it and drop it. So just make your life a little bit easier. Use SDXC whenever you can. When it comes to monitoring, the HDMI port can output a full UHD 60p signal. It's an HDMI 2.0 port. If you have a monitor that is capable of receiving that, yeah, you can monitor in full UHD. And that's great, that's wonderful. But the camera's processing power is limited to the point where while it can record that or display it out, out the output port, it can't do both simultaneously. So you can see it on the viewfinder and you can be recording it, but when it comes time to output it while recording, it has to drop down to HD. So as soon as you hit the record button, your monitor is gonna to drop to HD 60p, 1920 by 1080 60p during recording. When recording stops, then the monitor will restore back to UHD, which is fine, but depends on how fast your monitor is. HDMI has to communicate back and forth with the monitor and tell it what format it's sending and all that kind of stuff. And that can take a few seconds. So you might encounter when you hit record, your monitor might go away for two or three seconds before the SD image comes up. You can bypass all of this in two ways. Number one, you can set your HDMI output, you know, when you know you're gonna be recording, just set the HDMI output to 1080p instead of UHD, and then you'll have continuous monitoring. Yes, it'll be at 1080p, but at least it'll be continuous. Or the other ways you can just use SDI, that's always at 1080p. If you need to monitor in UHD, you're just gonna to have to be aware that if you're recording internally and monitoring externally, it is gonna drop out for a few seconds while the monitoring changes. And the last tip I'm gonna share, which really probably should have been the first tip, I've done a number of demonstrations on the camera and I remember this when I first got the camera. I see people press the LCD and nothing happens. And they press it again and nothing happens. The LCD screen works fine, but it's not like a phone. It's, it needs a little bit of pressure. It needs a little bit of time. You have to slow down your presses. So when you press and hold for a second, press it deeper. You can't just flick it. It doesn't respond to a very light touch. It doesn't respond to electrical capacitance. It, it doesn't know that a finger was there. You need to put pressure on it in order to get it to respond, which can actually be a bonus because if you're using gloves, you know, it doesn't need electrical capacitance. It just uses pressure. So even with gloves on, you can still trigger the menus. So my tip on the menus, slow down, press deeper, and you'll have a lot more success in navigating the menu system. Hope you found this helpful. Hope I've helped uh, jumpstart your learning process on the DVX200. You want more information or more tips and tricks? See the other videos in this series and be sure to download your copy of the DVX200 book. It's a free download from Panasonic's website. Thanks for watching. Panasonic.